Praise God, praise God, give him glory, give him glory. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon, day 19 of the 40-day fast. Praise God, we're almost to the half mark, you guys. So those that are definitely um, on the fast, and we have a lot all over the world, thousands are fasting, praying on one accord. Come on, somebody, that is so important. That is very, very pertinent in this hour. A lot of people don't understand that this is the great falling away. I know people don't want to hear it, but it's true. That's why we're seeing so much death and chaos and disobedience. It's it's the spirit of lawlessness. But the way God told me to bring it this morning is that, do you all remember, and another thing, you, most of you don't know your Bible. I pray that before or everything happens and it will happen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, that you get to know your Bibles, but, um, I'm actually going to offer something, um, very soon. So to see if we can actually do this together. Um, I, I don't want to put out too much information about it right now, but definitely I will offer something, but, um, right now I'm going to stick to the story at hand. And what I am saying is that God is saying that when Aaron built the golden calf, Moses was absent, right? And so when the true priests are away, the people will play. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. See, the fake ones, they don't mind. And I'm not saying Aaron was fake, but he was misguided. You know, the same thing, the same spirit that was on Saul. Most people want to please people and not God. We have to learn that people, oh, you, you, we're fine. We love each other. God bless everybody. But God is your God. And if God is your God, then you have to also obey God as he is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me get into my text here. And I'm coming from Exodus chapter 32. And basically, I'm going to um, read the NIV version. I really don't like that. I like the King James version. But because I know a lot of people are not biblical, um, they don't apply biblical application, meaning they don't understand the scriptures. I want it to be broken down in the least viable way to where you guys will understand what I'm trying to say here. So let's start. It, it's talking about the golden calf. And I'm going to start in Exodus 32, verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was long in coming down from the mountain, notice that God's people don't want, y'all don't like to wait on nothing. And that's how they got us. Fast food, fast churches, fast, you're not getting it. God, if you notice, the old people say, God, take his time. I understand what they were trying to really say about that, is that give God time. And he don't need it now. Don't, don't get it twisted. But he, he takes his time on purpose because he wants us not to be rushed. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything, prayer and supplication. Do you notice that that is one of the, the attributes of the enemy? He's always trying to get you to rush, move fast, because he knows that you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to meditate. You don't have time for wisdom. You don't have time for discernment. So he's always trying to get you to move when God has not told you to move. Come on, that's for somebody. Hallelujah to his name. So let me get it started here. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come make us gods. Wow. Will who will go before us as for this fella Moses, not he calling him fella, <laughs> fella Moses who brought us out of Egypt. We don't know what has happened to him. Wow. Verse two, Aaron said, Aaron answered them, excuse me, take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. Verse three. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into idol and made it into an idol cast into the shape of a calf. Notice that word idol there. Fashion it with a two. Then they said, these are your gods. Wow. Israel who brought you up out of Egypt. Verse five, when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced tomorrow we will have a, be a festival to the Lord. And they always want to try to say, oh, we're going to do it into the Lord. Okay. Six. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings, presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in rivalry. Now, let me tell you, it's actually rivalry, I'm sorry. And that is in pleasure. Um, can I ask you something? What does people like these days? Everybody want to have fun. Oh, I'm going, I'm going to drill this thing until everybody gets it straight up because God has me on this. God keeps piercing my spirit with everybody just want to have fun. 
Everybody just, the world got everybody wanting to have sex. Yeah, I'm saying that. I'm sorry. I know most people are going to preach on this because they want you to have beautiful cars and they want you to have nice this and nice that. And that's all fine and dandy. But I'm going to tell you, I'm after your soul. And hold on. I can't help your soul, but I can, t- I can take you to the one that can. I can preach to the one that can. Y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Most preachers not understanding this is high time. The hour is at hand. You guys don't see what's happening oh come on somebody hallelujah the enemy is trying to separate you from God through sin and if he can do that then he can have your soul and if he can have your soul then God loses control oh come on somebody it's the same thing that happened in heaven how do you think that he got God's own angels to turn against him he introduced them to another sermon oh y'all ain't ready for me this morning he introduced them to another way hey we don't all have to obey God isn't that the same thing that's happening we don't all have to live righteous. Isn't that the same thing what's happening? We don't all have to be perfect. And nobody said be perfect, but he said, be ye therefore striving towards perfection. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue. Verse seven. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought, notice that God didn't even call them his people. And he said, your people <laughs> who you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. Ooh, they have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast into the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said this, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Nine, I have seen these people, the law said to Moses, and they are stiff necked people. 10. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. Can I tell you something? Oh, this is going to pierce. This is going to pierce. Sometimes God has to destroy everything around you and sometime in you until finally he can make you into that great person that he have called you to be, that he've anointed you to be, that he's appointed you to be. Oh, come on somebody. And yet we'll cry. No, no, no. Not understanding that the chastening that God is laying on you at this time, or may I say allowing is for your present good. Oh, come on somebody. And the latter good. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Okay. Verse 11. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger and relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And I will give your descendants all this land. I promised them and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had um, threatened. I think that's a misthink, a, a misspelling in the NIV version because it, it doesn't say relented. It says repented, but Hey, whatever. Um, that's why I don't like these other versions. They, well, just everybody mess up when I guess they're printing. Uh, verse 15, Moses turned and went down the mountains and the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God. Hold on. So you mean the Ten Commandments God wrote with his hand? We know that, right? So that's how serious it is. Engraved on the tablets. 17, when Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is sound of war in the camp. 18, Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. 19. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf in the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them into pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned into the fire, then into the ground, the powder scattered in the water and made the Israelites drink it. Okay, so the king... Um, James Version goes into a little deeper more. Before he threw down the commandment um, tablets, he said, if you cannot live by the word of God, then you should die by the word of God. Can I tell you something? And I know people don't like it because it's tight and it's right. That is the same thing God is saying today. If you cannot live by the word of God, then you should die by the word of God. But when we say that, oh, you're judging. Excuse me. That is written. And ain't nobody could stop it. And guess what? To the, from the 
beginning to the end, that's exactly how it's going to be. You can do what you want to do. You can go where you want to go. You can say what you want to say. You can lie. You can play. You can do all that. At the end of that thing, we are going to be judged. And it does not matter. And so you better count the cost. And you don't have preachers warning people that you better count the cost because hell is real. Fire is real. Heaven is real. They're not teaching that. Then they're teaching you, go ahead, have fun, have fun, have fun. Oh, come on, somebody. Everything costs you. Everything costs you. Oh, come on, somebody, count the cost. I'm telling you what God said. Hallelujah. So he said to Aaron, what did these people do to you? Oh, come on, because I'm going to break that thing down. Now, Aaron is supposed to be helping Moses. He's a priest, and Aaron was a high priest. But he said, what did these people do to you? Let me tell you why most churches are ineffective. And hold on, I'm not bashing the church. I need y'all to know because I think a lot of people don't understand my mandate. It's correction and that's just the way it is. But that's what's happening. It's the people. Sometimes the people turn the pastor into this something that he's not supposed to be. And what I'm talking about is they do what you guys want them to do. You know, uh, don't preach that. Uh, um, don't teach that. D- don't, don't live that. Uh, we we go go away. You don't hear what I'm saying. Aaron was supposed to do what God wanted him to do. But you have these jelly bag preachers. Go come on somebody where the people start getting in their ear. Well, you know, the people don't like this subject. Well, you know, the people don't like y- y- y'all get the drift. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So Moses said, he said, what did these people do to you? And that you led them into such great sin. Notice that. I, I'm, we're going to break that thing down. That you led them into great sin. That's exactly what's going on today. If you don't preach the truth, if you don't teach the truth, then you are leading people into a sin. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies and men of God, that will not be my story. Oh, I, I know people don't like me. I know they don't like what I preach and I, I get it. And trust me, sometimes my human side, I'm like, oh God, but the spirit inside of me, say what you want, do what you want. I'm going to preach this thing because I will not hear when I get to heaven and I will make it. Come on, somebody. I won't hear. Well, Deanna, why did not why did you compromise? Why didn't you say this? Why didn't you say that? Well, God, I didn't want the people mad at me. The devil is a lie because guess what? If you don't preach the truth, then you lead them into a lie. Oh, come on somebody. Now, how do you lead them into the lie? Because you're supposed to tell the truth, even if it scares the hell out of them. If you understand what I just said, oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. And then he says, do not be angry, my Lord. Aaron answered, you know how prone these people are to evil. Oh, let me read that again. And we in, we in Exodus third chapter 32 and I'm at verse 22. He says, do not be angry, my Lord. Aaron answered, You know how prone these people are to evil. Can I tell you something? The people have always been prone to evil. And to be honest with you, we like evil more than good and and get mad. I I keep coming back to that Cain and Abel spirit. Cain and Abel spirit going to be on this earth to the day we all die. End of story. Some, most going to want to do what Cain want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm grown. Okay, with your grown self. All right. And then you have Abe. Abe, Abel, and and he wants to do what God wants to do. That same spirit. I just want to please God. No, we're not perfect. But I just want to please God. Y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let us continue. Verse 23 said, they said to to me, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up. And and now he's going to tell exactly what they say. Now now he helped them, but now he's going to tell on them. You see how this rose brought us up out of Egypt. We don't know what has happened to him. Verse 24. So I told them whoever has gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave it to me and I threw it in the fire and out came a, he said, out came a calf. Okay. Out came a calf. No, you made a calf, Aaron. And that's another thing. You, you, you know, when people are telling stories, they love to kind of like mix it. He say, and out came a, no, the captain came out. You made a calf. <laughs> Verse 25, Moses saw that the people were running wild. Wow. Isn't that the same thing was happening with the church right now? Oh, y'all ain't ready. And that Aaron had led them out of control. And so becoming a laughing stock to their enemies. Isn't that the same thing was happening now? Y'all aren't ready for me this morning. When people get on Facebook and start airing out your dirty laundry, especially church folk, 
That's what the enemy does. He laughs at everybody. You see the church? You see their mockery? And he, and then now the world is like, well, why do we want to be saved? Because if you guys don't have it together, what makes you think you can tell us anything or teach us anything or preach us anything? And that's why these young kids are living the way they're living. And, and when I used to visit back home in Louisiana and the young people, they really gravitate toward me. They, I say, why are you not doing right? He said, most of these preachers down here, they do the same thing we do. They just hide. Y- y'all know people know, right? I mean, this this a big little world if y'all don't know what I'm saying. People know what you do. They just might not be saying it to your face. But we all pay attention. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Let me continue in this word. And so he says, um, so he stood, I'm verse 26. So he stood at the entrance of the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites read to him. Notice the Levites. Now, Levitical priesthood, that is where... All the priests are actually supposed to come from the lineage. And Levitical, so say, had the upright in heart. I say so say because the word of God says they're more upright in heart. But we're finding out that more preachers are doing bad things, right? Being coerced by the devil. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So verse 27, then he said to them, this is what the Lord thy God of Ezra says. Each man strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. Oh, y'all don't like that kind of talk, huh? So hold on. If God commanded this for disobedience, you think God does not command us to judge one another's actions? Isn't this was the same thing was being was being done? Moses was sent to judge them. Yes, he was. He was like, those that's for the Lord come to me. Those that ain't, you know what time it was. They were commanded to kill them. Well, what people don't understand, um, that's the Old Testament. Let me tell you something. The old is just as viable as the new. That's exactly what's happening now. Don't you understand that God is allowing people to get be killed? Why do y'all think these young children are dying? Because they are so disobedient. Oh, y'all don't want to. And then y'all want to put some little wings on them. You could put wings on a picture all day long. If they walk like hell, talk like hell, live like hell. Well, guess what? You get the picture. And you can pray for people all day long. And I'm a, hold on, l- l- let me do a disclaimer. I'm an avid preacher, meaning that I wish that everybody can go to heaven too. I wish that we all live l- little perfect lives, not perfect per se, but doing what God wants us to do. Y'all know that's not real. People do what they want to do. And then they'll lie about what they do. Come on, somebody act like they don't do what they do as if we're crazy. Oh yeah, I'm saying it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's, let's see what happens here at verse 28. The Levites did as Moses commanded. And that day about 3000 of the people died. Do you understand what's happening here? You guys, verse 29, then Moses said, you have been set apart to the Lord today for you were against your own sons, brothers, and he has blessed you this day. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this, but I'm gonna have to do it. Don't y'all see that the same thing that's happening today. We don't have a choice. Either you live for God. Or you die by the sword. And I know that's some hard preaching and y'all don't want to. Well, God love everybody. Are you listening to what I'm reading? Because this is this is his word. This is the same God. And he does not change. So it's like everybody's preaching love and forgiveness and grace and mercy. And that's good. But nobody's preaching truth. God is not going to just allow you to disobey him. Are you serious? As a matter of fact, if there would be no day for judgment, then, then we all just go to heaven. So judgment coming, whether you like it or not, whether you preach it or not, whether you live it or not. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You better listen to what I'm saying here. All right. Verse 30. The next day, Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. That's exactly what's happening today. The true preachers are telling people, you're committing a great sin, but we're going to go and stand in the gap for you. But that don't mean God is going to just, well, you know, you cool. No. Are you good? No. Change from your wicked ways and see what the Lord is saying. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And then you wonder why. And nobody's speaking curses, but I have to say what I have to say this morning. You wonder why people are sick. You wonder why people are dying. You wonder why this and that. Don't you understand that sin is 
Sin introduces everything into your body and into your life. That's why God says, I want you to live righteous. I want you to make good judgments. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to understand everything begins with a choice, free will, and God will never force you to serve him. But guess what? There is consequences both ways. You serve God and obey him, then you will live in prosperity and like good life. He never said it was going to be easy. You disobey him, then you will get what you get. Hallelujah. This is still real. As it was yesterday, so it is today and forevermore. For he changes not, thus saith the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Okay, let us continue. So Moses, um, praise God. So Moses went back to the Lord, I'm at verse 31, and said, Oh, what a great sin people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. Moses Look what Moses told to God. He said, block me out if you're going to take them too. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So God will always have men and women of God that stand in the gap for you. But now hold on. You still got to be held accountable for what you do and what you say and what you don't say and what you don't do. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 33, the Lord replied to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Are y'all listening to this? I'm going to read that again. Verse 33, the Lord replied to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. That is real. All right. 34. Now go lead the people to take to the place I spoke of and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. No, no, no. Let me read that again. 34. Now go lead the people to the place I spoke of and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. Women of God, men of God, are you listening? Can you hear me? Because this is the same God that we serve. And just because you're getting away with it now, don't mean punishment's not coming later. And that's for me. What I preach and teach to you is for me as well. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I pray that we start teaching and preaching the right way. And I don't know if you notice what I've been doing lately. I've been teaching just principles, not teaching my opinion or anything, because I realize what's happening here. People are not teaching principles. They're teaching a great message, but they're not teaching God's law. We need to go back to God's law. All that opinion and good preaching of an analogy of what God's law is supposed to be. No, it's time to preach what is so people can hear the truth and then they make a righteous judgment whether they want to live this or not. But understand Whatever you do, that's a consequence. So don't think you're getting away with anything. And I think people, that they, they, they think because, as a matter of fact, I know it to be true. God said, you know why they play with me, Deanna? He said, because I haven't spoken yet. I haven't punished them yet. Notice the word yet. And so, you know, it's just like a little kid. Oh, but it's just like anybody that think they slick. They'll keep doing it. They'll keep doing it. But you know what I found out? One day. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You better hear me. I one day. You gonna get caught because ain't nobody that good. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all know what time it is. All right, let me continue. Verse 35. And the law struck the people with the plague because of what they did with the calf and Aaron had made. Praise God, praise God. That was the word of God and the teaching of God. Let me tell y'all something. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. God has never lied. God cannot lie. He is not man, but God has a loving heart. And yes, I will always say this. At the end of everybody, you're supposed to have a heart of love. But let me tell you something right now. God is still requiring you to be righteous. He's still requiring you to be holy. Ain't nobody want to be holy no more. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got people wearing tight clothes in the pulpit. I saw another man yesterday with a tight shirt on. And I know y'all don't like this analogy I'm getting ready to do. Y'all remember the other one I used to wear a tight shirt because that's how I started with with um Pastor Eddie Long, Bishop Eddie Long. Let me give him his title because that's who he was, regardless of what happened. Let me tell y'all something. This is not a game. They sitting up in these pulpits playing. This is not a game. This could be death or life. Straight up. Hallelujah. God do not play. I've seen it in my own life when um I was preaching in well, in 2012, when I had cancer, cervical cancer. And I told y'all what happened. I had married this guy, and I, and I heard God say no the first day. I'm very transparent on purpose. I heard God, but I wasn't listening to God. I had got it in my mind, you know what, God? Uh, you're not in the bay by yourself. I, I, uh, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'll tell you, I will never forget 2012. 
that was one of the most crucial times in my life where I thought I was going to die. That cancer, had, I had gotten to a size three. I was on hospice. Um, they had called my daughter. They was preparing my funeral. I'm telling you the truth before God. Anybody could vouch for this that was around me at that time. And I, I wanted to die. I felt like I had disappointed God. I did what I wanted to do. And God, and let me tell you something. He told me what he was going to do. And y'all sitting up there thinking people lying, meaning that God don't play that. Way. Yes, he do. He told me. I was working at Comcast. He said, get the best insurance because you're going to need it. When he said that, it pierced my spirit. I said, God, what, what, you know, I, I, I was trying to, okay, maybe I'm tripping. God couldn't talk to me that way. He, he, he surely not going to do that to me because I serve him. And I tell you, it hit me to the core of my spirit. When it happened to me and I, and I saw my body literally using the life and my limbs and I couldn't walk and, 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 and it just felt like death was in me. And I cried and I cried and I, and I asked him, I said, God, am I going to die? He said, no, but stop playing with me. I need you to be obedient because what's inside of you, this is not about you. And I remember saying, well, what do I do? He said, fight. And he said, you're going to have to fight by yourself because my husband was abusing me at the time. So yes, while I'm having the cancer and I'm not trying to make that man look bad, I'm talking here. Hallelujah. And so you know, I'm getting beat up while I have the cancer. I can't even fight back. The day, the day after my surgery, he kicked me in the stomach and my body just started convulsions. And I remember I was just, God, take me, take me. This is too much to bear. Then the doctor had made a mistake when he did the surgery. So I had to have, um, I couldn't even, and this is going to sound bad and I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be derogatory. I couldn't even urinate on my own. All my functions, y'all hear what I'm saying, huh? All my functions. I had, I had a bag on me, you guys. Y'all not ready for me. Hallelujah. I, 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 I couldn't even control my own body. Hallelujah to his name. And when God took me out of that, he said, fight Deanna. And so I, I put out everybody because they wasn't with me. Oh, I had had a, a million dollars insurance policy and me and my big mouth, I said, I told them. And so they was waiting for me to die. Y'all ain't ready for me. Hallelujah. And when God, I heard God say, fight, he said, you're going to have to fight by yourself. And that's what happened. I had nobody around me in the most crucial time of my life. And hold on, I ain't mad, hallelujah, because that was my journey. That was what God allowed. But I tell you one thing, when I came out that thing, I promised God I'll never disobey you like that again. That's why I'm not married today. Because guess what? I ain't doing it unless he say it. Hallelujah to his name. Because I know what he can do. So yes, I have fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I preach this thing and I teach this thing because you weren't with me when he allowed that. I knew what it felt like, and I knew he could have took my life any time, but he said, now do you understand who you are and whose you are? Hallelujah! That's why I preach and I teach with such passion and conviction and ain't scared of y'all. Hallelujah! Because I know that God is God, and he's a God of his word, and if you disobey his word, Look for it. And this is, and yes, this is to scare the hell out of you. It is. Because a lot of people are living like hell, talking like hell, moving like hell, doing all kind of stuff as if it ain't going to come. Sooner or later, my friends, your sin will find you. And I'm talking from experience. Hallelujah to his name. This stuff real. And so what am I doing? warning you hallelujah that's my mandate the correction y'all better stop y'all better stop he's not playing he's not playing be mindful oh because that's why he let me live he didn't let me live because i was righteous he let me live because now i have i i i i, I have a, a witness on how i operate don't play with me hallelujah so i pray that you understand my passion and also the action in what I do things. Because God allowed a lot of things to happen to show me. I love you, but I need you to be correct. I need you to be respectful. I need you to understand who I am. Because this thing, truth be told, let me tell you why we preach and we teach. And all of us have a calling. Many are called, but few are chosen. You know the difference between the many. You want to do what you want to do. You notice the few God that allows some things to happen to us to where we understand that he is God. And so God allows us to teach and to preach and to let you know that this is not about you. There are gifts inside of you. There is callings inside of you that another person needs to hear. It could be a word that you say that changed somebody's life. It could be your testimony. It could be your love for God. It could be your passion for God. It could be the anointing of God. It could be the fire of God, the presence of God. 
because we're not all that great. It is his spirit that's inside of us that preaches and teaches and reaches. We're not so great. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And you always know the difference between flesh and God because flesh will glorify flesh, but the presence of God will glorify God. Hallelujah. And people don't like the presence because it exposes you. You, you, you. Let me leave y'all with this. You, you ever went into a dark room? Well, as soon as you open, as soon as you turn on the light, you see everything, huh? Oh, that's what the word of God does. That's what the presence of God does. It exposes everything and everybody. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. And I pray that you understand how serious this is. People are dying without God. What is our mandate? What is our mission? Warn the people and offer them Jesus Christ. He saves. He lives. He forgives. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. A study alcohol, drugs, sex, money. House, cars. That's that. That's okay, but that's not gonna save the people. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Dixon, and you know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is who we are. God bless. <laughs>